13th. Is that the right date? Yes. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Um, good evening, and on behalf of the City of Independence, welcome to this Planning Commission meeting. For those who wish to speak tonight, please remember to address all comments and questions to the chair and keep your comments brief and on point. If you agree with the previous comment, simply indicate your agreement and move on. To expedite tonight's meeting, I'll ask those who wish to testify or believe you might like to testify to please stand and be sworn in. That includes applicants, please. If you even think you want to just go ahead and get sworn in, you can always change your mind. All right, please, your right, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell this commission your, the truth, the whole truth? If so, say, I do. I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay. <clears throat> First order of business is roll call. Commissioner Ferguson? Here. Commissioner Michelle? Here. Commissioner Nesbitt? Here. Commissioner H. Wiley? Did you say H? H. Here. Commissioner L. Wiley? Here. Commissioner Preston? Here. And Chair McLean? Here. Thank you. Okay. Consent agenda. Um, looks like all we have is the minutes. Has everybody had time to look at them? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to you. Approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there second? Thank you. And we're ready for a vote. <coughs> Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Michelle? Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt? Yes. Commissioner H. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Chair McLean? Yes. Thank you. All right, our first public hearing is case number 22-100-20, rezoning of 701 North Forest Avenue, um, a request by Walter Bethany to rezone this property from R6, which is single family residential, to R12, which is two family residential. Staff, will you give us a report, please? Yes, this is an application by Walter Bethay to rezone the property at North 701 North Forest Avenue from <clears throat> R6, which is single family residential, to R12, two family residential. You can see on the map, it's on the north east corner of uh, Forest and uh, West College Terrace. It's, it presently contains a small house, which we'll see in a minute. This is the zoning of the surrounding property. The applicant's property, along with the other properties, to the east and to the west, primarily, our zoned uh, single-family residential, R6. And that dark brown triangle that comes down into, this, into the view there is actually zoned uh, multifamily. I don't know why it's been that way for a number of years. There's actually two, uh, I think they're duplexes up in the very extreme uh, north uh, east of this property. This is actually the vacant lot part of it. The comprehensive plan recommends uh, low density or neighborhood residential uses for this site. <clears throat> the site is about uh, 0.42 acres in size. Uh, the applicant seeks to uh, rezone it to build and then divide the property into two to build a duplex on each of the lots. Uh, the property uh, has been zoned uh, R6. R, R1, as the case may be, since at least November 1965. Um, he purchased this property on the, at this northeast corner about two years ago with the intent to develop the site. To that end, he now seeks to rezone the property to R12, again, divided it into two lots, and then construct a duplex on each lot. The only thing that's on the property now is a small single-family home in the northwest corner of the site, which will be demolished to make uh, way for the future development 
perhaps 40% of the current lot is comprised of an abandoned railroad right away, which you don't see very well on this photograph. Um, of the Kansas City Southern, it went in a northeast-southwest alignment. Uh, characteristics of the area, it is, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 20th, excuse me, college terrace is kind of the demarcation line. It's uh, pretty much single-family homes to the north of there and uh, with some mix. I mean, this area of Independence is kind of a mix anyway. But then properties to the south are primarily duplex. And we, again, we talked about the proposal, what he seeks to do. Uh, divide the property into two and build two duplexes on the property. This is the plat that the uh, applicant surveyor submitted to divide the property. Here you can see the uh, conditions of the site. Uh, this is a small house on the north side of the north lot. And then uh, the former railroad right away uh, goes in an east, northeast, southwest configuration. Actually, it was vacated, and that's what comprises the area of the lot that's shown in that track there. Uh, this area is uh, Butts Forest Avenue on the on uh, north of Truman Road and contains mostly single-family homes, north of college and a blend of single-family and duplexes south of the street, which aligns with the respective zoning north and south of college. Most of the homes constructed in this area are, are post-war 1950s. Uh, the uh, southwest corner of the intersection is the county, excuse me, the city's water department property office and storage yard. We'll see that here in an aerial photograph. The site is located within the West White Oak neighborhood. And the historic uh, preservation uh, master plan identifies this area as, to be as challenged um, as there have been uh, um, a lack of due investment due to limited owner-occupied housing. Plan identifies more single-family owned, single-family owner-occupied properties should be encouraged here. This construction of duplexes on each of the lot will not be in keeping with the uh, historic preservation master plan. Okay, this is a picture of the uh, small house that's on the property now. It's on the northwest corner of the site. I don't know how long it's been vacant for a, a couple of years. Here we're at the uh, intersection of. Uh, <clears throat> College Terrace and uh, Forest looking to the east northeast. Uh, you can see this uh, property is uh, vacant here, it kind of slopes down to the southwest. This is another uh, picture of the property. Here we're looking uh, east up West College Terrace. The applicant's property is on the left. There are some duplexes there on the right. This is the property. Uh, on the south side of College Terrace here, you can see it's a duplex. There's another one here. And this is looking to the southwest at the city's water department uh, facility. Uh, here we're looking uh, west down east and 9th Street. It changes from College Terrace to each 9th Street there. It's a single family home just uh, west of the property. That's another picture of the home. And these are some of the homes that are uh, across from the applicant's property to the north of the intersection. And here we're looking south at the intersection again towards uh, Truman Road, which is off in the distance there. This is the house that's immediately north of the applicant site. Staff does not recommend approval of this rezoning to R12 as the current... <clears throat> R6 zoning conforms to, with other properties north of College Terrace, which are primarily zoned R6. Thank you. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions before we ask the applicant to come forward? Madam Chair? Yes. Okay, so you're saying that directly to the north is a duplex, is that correct? That's the property that's directly to the north. It's a small single family home. Now properties on the south side of College Terrace are duplexes. South side, okay. Yeah, we'll this that. is the south side. This one and then the next to it and there's several along there. Th those are duplexes? Yeah. Well, maybe not that one, but that one is. Yeah, it's like a side entry type duplex. Okay. 
Okay. Again, that's south of a, a college there on the right and uh, the applicant's property on the okay. left. How about the house that's across from the city water? Is that a duplex? Um, let's see. This is the house that's nor on the northwest corner of that intersection. The city's water plant is there, the property is there on the left. How about the that's the house that's immediately to the north there. That's on the intersection. As we go north, they're all single family homes. Okay, because I was looking, I'm looking at the map and I was looking, it looked like there was a duplex directly to, I thought it was the, okay, maybe the south on the same side of the road. That's what it looked like to me. I wasn't sure. It's, they're on the south side of, the, of College Terrace, sir. Okay. That there's only one or two? I believe there's three or four along three there. I'm not okay. sure right off the bat. So there's but quite, There's uh, quite a few duplexes there. On the south side, yeah. Okay, so that's, so they've got, they got to be zoned R12 then, correct? That is, that's right. So not, not the whole street is R6 then? Well, on the north versus the south. The south is R12 and then the north is R6. North is R6. Okay, thank you. Stuart, can we see the surrounding uh, zoning map again? Okay. Thank you. Okay, the, the light yellow is the R6 single family. The dark yellow is uh, R12. You can see the line there is a college and then ninth. That's helpful, thank you. Okay, will the applicant come forward please? <clears throat> Well, uh, my correspondence with the applicant, uh, he said that he would be here a couple of days if he didn't get sick again. Okay. And uh, I, apparently uh, the applicant or the owner is the property owner here. Mr. Bethay? No, I guess they're not here. Okay. I, I know that, uh, like I said, he's been, he was sick last time and I, the message I received like last week when I emailed him, he said he would be here unless he got sick okay. again. Okay. <laughs> so how would you like to proceed? You want me to go ahead and proceed as normal? And well, I guess you could continue on or uh, continue the case to the January meeting. Is there a requirement for the applicant to be here? No, you can uh, take action okay. on it if you'd like. Take testimony. I think if we have anybody here to speak to or against, we probably should proceed. Madam Chair, I, yes. I would suggest we go ahead because this is, the, what, the third time that we continue? This is the second time. Second, second time? Yeah. Well, I mean, they've had ample time, so let's just continue. My yeah, opinion. I don't think that's a bad idea. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I am persuaded that I am receptive to additional information to give a favorable decision on this. Mm -hmm. However, absent additional information, I'm not inclined to be in favor. Therefore, I would, contrary to Commissioner Nesbitt, I think we should probably continue this. Would you feel better if we gathered information first from anybody who's here to speak? And if they're not, then maybe we could choose to continue it again. I'm open to that, Madam Chair. Any other thoughts? Go ahead. I, I would say what, what other information do you think could be ascertained that would sway the commission away from following the staff's recommendation? That's exactly what I'm waiting for, mm -hmm. whatever that information might be. I would be inclined to be in favor of more housing. This would house four families, potentially. That excites me. So I would be in agreement with you, Billy, on, on if someone's truly sick multiple times, then I don't want something that could potentially be good housing to fail without some additional information. Madam Chair, I think the commissioner L. Wiley, speak with good wisdom. M Mr. Preston, could you make sure you... Uh... M Madam Chair, I think Commissioner L. Wiley 
speaks with good wisdom. I think we should probably defer to the lady's wisdom. And I'm sure Commissioner Nesbitt will make a motion to continue. Madam Chair. Commissioner Wiley. I feel like we should see if there's people here who want to speak since they're here mm -hmm. and hear them out. I, I'm in favor of that as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm inclined to think that is the fair thing to do when somebody made the effort to come out just because the applicant could not make yeah. it and the kind of correspondence was it who was going to be here, that is the fair thing to do. Um, so why don't we do that? Let's listen, if that's okay, Counselor, listen to those who came and then we can make a decision. If we still don't feel like we have enough information to go on this, we can either discuss it and then, um, is that okay? Yes, Chairman McLean, um, if it's the decision ultimately of the uh, commission to continue, just make sure that there's a motion to continue the public hearing to a date certain of the next meeting, okay. whatever that date would be. Okay. All right. Is there anyone here who would like to speak for this case? I'll speak. Okay. Please come up, state your name and your address, please, and make sure the microphone is right in front of you. Sure. My name is Colleen Huff, and I live at 717 South Willis Avenue, and this is somewhat in my neighborhood, and I'm all about improving independence, and it just makes logical sense to me since there are several duplexes right in the same area that we would consider doing this. However, I would like to see what the duplexes are going to look like. So if I had pictures of you know, what the finished product would look like, then I might be more inclined to support this. But as I said, any new houses or duplexes would be an improvement over what it looks like now. And while I'm here, really paving all the streets in the area would really help the neighborhood to look better as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for this case? Is there anyone who would like to speak against this case? Okay. Hearing none, the public portion of this case is almost closed. I have, I have a question for staff before anybody makes a motion. From an acreage standpoint, is there enough acreage here to support two duplexes in an R12? Uh, if you look at the uh, <clears throat> proposed plat that the applicant uh, surveyor has done, uh, there's the property size is, is fine to, to build a duplex on each lot. Okay. I just wanted to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. That parcel size, is it comparable to the other uh, duplexes? Across the street to the Across south? The uh, <laughs> probably. I don't, don't know right offhand. Um, the south lot actually may be a little bigger. Corner lots are usually bigger because you have more setback required. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say comparable. Okay. One other question. That neighborhood is at a tipping point. It can go and decline or it can be gentrification, improvements, and a new trend upward. What do you think the impact of additional multi-dwelling? That's why you get paid the big bucks. Um, you know, putting a house on each lot is obviously not an issue. Um, duplexes? I don't know. I that's. I don't think that's a question I can answer right off the cuff. I'm sorry. You answer the question. <laughs> well, I, since we're going to go ahead and air it, should I go ahead and close the public hearing since we're discussing or? Madam Chair. Yes. We, we uh, I want to make a motion that we postpone this with, the, uh, with it open to the next meeting so that people can be here. So that way we leave the public forum open. Once you close it, you close it. Okay. I, don't know. I don't think you can reopen it, right? I mean, well, you, you just close it to re, and then it's re-heard. Yeah, you could. 
close the public hearing for the purposes of taking testimony tonight, yeah. but the commission could still pass a motion to continue the public hearing on the application to the next date. Yeah. I just make a motion that we postpone to the next meeting. Okay, let me close the public hearing first. And then, um, yeah, we could, I can entertain I'll second a motion. motion. Okay, did you say it? Yeah, I said the motion, yeah. Okay. In a second? Okay. And let's take a vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Michelle? Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt? Yes. Commissioner H. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Chair McLean? Yes. Case number 22-100-20, uh, rezoning of 701 North Forest has been continued to what date? Do, do you know? That would be to January 10th. To January 10th, 2023. That hurts. <laughs> okay. Next case is case number 22-100-21, rezoning of 709 and 713 South Willis Avenue, request by Maria Vargas to rezone these properties from uh, L1 industrial, I1 to industrial to R6 single family residential. Staff, will you give us a report, please? Yeah, this is, a, like you said, a request by uh, Maria Vargas to rezone two lots that are on the <coughs> west side of South Willis. Uh, Best uh, closest street that I can uh, relay this to is uh, it's a couple blocks east of uh, <clears throat> east of Chrysler and uh, north of 23rd Street. You can see on the map where it's located between two rail lines, which are the kind of the fuzzy lines that go diagonally there. <clears throat> this property has been uh, zoned industrial since uh, I think in 1965 when the whole area was zoned. Industrial is part of the uh, the city's thought at that time that this area would be in use in industrial because of the rail lines, the uh, Agco plant or the farm uh, Alice Chalmers plant. It's been called also is just to the northeast of this site. Here's the zonings for the properties. You can see the applicants uh, two lots of the in the two. Two properties in the dark blue rectangles. And directly to the south is residential property, the purple property for the applicants, and, and to the east, west, and to the north is on the industrial I-1. Like I said, these properties have been zoned industrial since at least 1965. The uh, Agco plant or the uh, farm implement building is uh, located to the northeast of here at 627 North Cottage. Uh, there has been, uh, the city has done a couple of rezonings, down, down zonings in this area in the past 20 years or so. Uh, the last one, maybe two years ago, we just did a couple little lots, and then uh, probably 15 years ago, we did 20 or so lots. Uh, she, she purchased this property about uh, <clears throat> five years ago, purchased the house. Uh, that she lives in now, uh, which is the south property of the 719, 713. And then uh, it made improvements to the site and to the house. And then recently, within the last couple of years, purchased the lot immediately to the north. There was a house there that was demoed. I think the city demoed it for a dangerous building or something. So she seeks to uh, sell the property and, uh, as you can imagine, Banks and lending institutions don't want to lend, make loans on property that's zoned industrial that's in residential use. <clears throat> this is an aerial photograph. Unfortunately, it's taken when the trees are on the, the leaves are on the trees, so you don't see it very well, but it is in the uh, two uh, rectangles there in the middle. Uh, the northern rectangle still shows the house on the property it was taken apparently more than two years ago. The uh, applicants houses on the south the rectangle, and it has the nice brick driveway that goes out to uh, <clears throat> Willis. The comprehensive plan recommends uh, existing neighborhood residential uses, which is a, a residential uh, 
comprehensive uh, recommendation for older parts of the city versus uh, newer parts. It is, uh, I can see it's a brown color versus a yellow color. It's mostly to used in this northwest corner of the city and only in the areas that are closer to the uh, center of the city of Independence. Uh, this two lots serve as part of the demarcation line, I'll call it, between the industrial zoning on the north and east and the residential property to the south and west. Uh, the, and you can see, we'll, we'll look at some of the photographs here. There's a metal building warehouse on the property immediately north of this site. And again, south of the site are houses that were built you know, a number of years ago up until just recently, kind of a mixed bag. The plan recommends for residential urban neighborhoods, uh, includes a mixture of housing that provides for a dense range of housing types. So this is the uh, North property, 709. Uh, they put a, uh, some, uh, the house but probably said about where that little canopy is there. Uh, the applicants have uh, stored some equipment and materials there on the site. You can see the warehouse there to the left on the adjoining property. <clears throat> this is the applicant site. Uh, they put in the nice driveway and rehab this house. Before, I don't have any pictures of what it looked like before, but my understanding it needed some work. We have pictures. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is the house that's immediately to the south. This was also rehab within the last several years. And then these are prop houses, two houses that are across the street to the west. Can have some rehab there going on and then another one. And then this is the property on the southwest corner of the intersection of Willis and um, I can't remember what that street's there, but it's southwest corner, it's in an industrial use is zoned industrial, some sort of warehouse and storage yard. This is looking north up Willis. You can see the applicant's uh, drive, property is to the right there. That's their uh, brick driveway. And then the uh, metal uh, warehouse you can see off to the right. And then other industrial warehousing type buildings north of there. Again, this is the building that's immediately north of the 709 property. Staff does recommend uh, rezoning of this property to R6, single family residential. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions of staff before we ask the uh, applicant to come Madam forward? Chair. Yes, sir. What we're doing here on this application is substantially a correcting. Am I correct? Yeah, that, that's right. There are numerous properties in this area that uh, also need some uh, zoning correction, I guess you could call have it. Have we considered we have, what we have done in the past? We have done that, uh, like I said, recently, as a couple of years ago, but not really any massive zoning or numerous properties in this area for a number of years, though. We hear you. Thank you. Will the applicant come forward, please, and state your full name and your address? All right. <clears throat> uh, well, good evening. My name's Maria Vargas. My address is actually 713 South Willis Avenue and uh, 703 South Willis Avenue. Thank you. Um, I am the current owner. I'm coming here today to present to you why I want both properties to change in zonings from I-1 to R-6. Back in 2017, we came across this property, 713 South Willis Avenue. This home was, um, was all in shell and inside was completely gutted. We came with the goal to fix it up and call it a home. Becoming a homeowner at a young age was really an accomplishment for my husband and I. When we bought the home, we weren't aware of the home being industrial. We had no clue what this could bring us, troubles in the future, and if our home had gone in through a fire or any hazardous thing. We started to live in what we called a home back in 2019, when it was completely renovated. As years passed, we started working on the outside giving it the best quality of stamped concrete. As we came across the lot next door, being vacant since the house was taken down, we bought the lot still through the title company and they never mentioned it being an I-1 zoning until we decided to sell our home. 
and look for another project we can take into our hands and once again call it a home. We want to make the next owners feel comfortable living in the home and not worry about having trouble to rebuild if their home catches a fire. I wish them, I want to give them peace um, and them not have to go through any hurdles coming along with this property. I also have some pictures here of how we bought the home and some updates that we did to it. If you guys want to go ahead and see. You can bring them up, yeah. Does she have any questions of Ms. Vargas while we're waiting? Our turn. <laughs> Well, we applaud you for doing the work. <laughs> Thank you, I really appreciate that. Because we have several situations like this that are not cleaned up, and unfortunately, until you find out, we don't know either, so. <laughs> we appreciate that, it's beautiful. Thank you, I really appreciate it. All right, commissioners, any questions of the applicant? I think we're good, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Is there anyone here who would like to speak for this case? I'll speak. I don't really feel like we I have need to. to. I'm you... Colleen Heff. Yes, state your name and your address again. 717 please. South Willis Avenue. Yeah, Maria's my neighbor. She's like a daughter to me. Um, I lived in the house for 13 years and the house next door was completely gutted. And it was, you know, it was just, it, it was a shell on the outside. And so, you know, just to see them come in after living next to a house that was vacant for 13 years was a blessing. And I'm just, I marvel, her husband is 23 and he's done all this work himself. And so I hate to see them move but I'm, you know, I mean, I'm just doing what I can to help them because they are a precious family. So. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for this case? Is there anyone who would like to speak against this case? <laughs> Hearing none, quest, uh, commissioners, do you have any more questions of applicant or are we ready? All right, public hearing is closed. Commissioners, I would entertain a motion or any discussion. Madam Chair, yes. I move that we approve case 22-100-21, rezoning of 709 and 713 South Willis from I-1 Industrial to R-6 Single Family Residential. Is there a second? second? Okay, we are ready for roll. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Michelle? Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt? Yes. Commissioner H. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Chair McLean? Yes. Case number 22-100-21 has been approved. Congratulations and good luck and thank you for calling our attention to it. Madam Chair, can I yes. say one thing? I appreciate anybody who does the right thing for the next owner. Mm -hmm. That's wow. a pretty amazing yeah. character trait. Thank you. Yeah. Are you eligible to be adopted? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, case number 22-100-22. Re rezoning PUDD at 420 South Main Street. Request by Mark Turnbow with Summit Holdings Group, LLC, to rezone the property from C2, General Commercial, to R18, slash PUD, Moderate Density Residential Planned Unit Development. City, I mean staff, report please. Again, this is case 22122. Um, as you can see on the vicinity map, it's um, basically just north of where Elm intersects with um, uh, Maine, um, just south of the railroad spur near the square area, just about a block 
west of Nolan Road. So the surrounding is a eclectic amount of different zonings around here. Uh, the, the properties to the east and the south are dominantly single-family homes and are zoned R6, single-family residential. You've got a um, commercial building to the north and zoned C2. Um, and then you have some industrial properties to uh, the west. And then nearby to the um, southwest, you have some uh, multifamily zoning as well on Liberty. Um, the comprehensive plan um, sees this area as a residential neighborhood, um, at least south of Short and east of Liberty, and you can see the mixed area that's, that is the um, square area to the north and to the west. Okay. Um, this property has been zoned uh, C2 since 1965. Uh, the lot was uh, developed um, with a 12-unit colonial-style office building in uh, the 1970s. Uh, the proposal by uh, Matt uh, Turnbaugh and Monty Nord Nordine, uh, intend to, they intend to uh, convert the underutilized office building that's located there at 420 South Main into a multifamily structure. Its redevelopment would um, renovate a, a vacant property providing uh, 12 affordable apartment units at the northwest corner of Main Street and Elm. Uh, the apartments would be one and two bedrooms and rent from uh, approximately uh, 900 to 1,100 per month respectively. Um, and uh, they would need to provide a buffer to the uh, single family residential to the south with a opaque fence and landscaping. Um, there would also be improvements to the property that would include resurfacing the parking lot and need, a need for adding additional green spaces and architectural elements added when, would include the facades being repainted, a wrought iron fence accents, and antique uh, gas lights. Uh, uh, the renovated building would also have magnetic security doors and on-site laundry facilities. Um, so here's an aerial photo of the property and the little blue square right there is in the middle of the building on the roof and this uh, drawing uh, shows the layout for the parking lot and um, some rudimentary uh, landscaping there along the uh, along uh, the sidewalk there as shown. Um, the underutilized, the characteristics of the area, the, um, I'll go back to the picture here. Um, industrial properties lie to this to the west and uh, there's a union hall to the north. Um, all the buildings were built in recent decades. Um, to the south, the single family residences are generally in good repair and uh, attractive in appearance. And they include a mixture of late uh, 1920th and mid 20th century construction. Um, this property, is adjacent to the South Main neighborhood. A number of years ago, the city approved uh, rezoning for the South Main area. This zoning changed the zoning classification from R12 and R18 to R6. Uh, the neighborhood is predominantly single family, like I said, but it does have a few churches and uh, multifamily sprinkled in throughout. The South Main neighborhood is identified in the Historic Preservation Master Plan. Uh, the South Main neighborhood was originally made up of stately homes on large lots 
um, owned by Independence professionals and business uh, owners, many of whom worked in the Independence Square area. Uh, several of these grand dwellings are individually listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and the properties at the northernmost and southernmost ends of the South Main neighborhood, um, of, unfortunately, have suffered the most from uh, demolition and um, questionable alterations alterations and some inappropriate infill. Um, as we look at this site plan again, the office building and its front and rear parking lot um, set are set against the south property line. So most of the existing green space, as you can see, and, and existing trees lie on this north side of the lot. So, so unlike uh, many older uh, properties in, in the city, there is a substantial opportunity here to add some landscaping uh, as well as to remove some existing pavement as well. Um, the property could easily meet the required parking ratio um, for six multifamily units and uh, provide uh, the um, landscape areas and plantings uh, called for um, in the code. And um, last item, uh, there are um, no CIP investments in this uh, corridor right here um, anticipated. We'll go through the, the remainder of the, the pictures here. So this is the um, office building. Um, some of the offices are, are interior entry and you can see there's also some on the end that have exterior entry on both sides there. Uh, this is looking west from Maine across uh, the right of way and the sidewalk there in the east parking lot. This is the way they conceive of uh, the building being rehabbed. You can see the uh, the, the gas lamps on there and the uh, and the wrought iron um, architectural features and some landscaping out front. Um, these are some previous apartments that um, they had done on other properties that they own. Um, we'll just go through them s slowly enough so you can see them, but. So here we are back at the same picture, looking west directly at the property. And this is looking northward along Main Street uh, toward the square area, toward the railroad track. And there's Elm coming in from the east, intersecting with Main. And this is um, Elm and Main looking southward. And this is a uh, northwest view there, or from the southeast looking northwest. Um, staff does not recommend approval of this uh, rezoning uh, PUD application, but if it's approved, staff recommends the following, that the uh, submitted site plan be revised to include, include more planting in a number and in a matter as prescribed by the code that a landscape buffer and screen be provided along the south property line per code, and that a masonry trash enclosure be provided somewhere north or west of the building. And that concludes my presentation. I'm ready to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Commissioners? I have a question. Um, <clears throat> and I'll, I've, I have comments and maybe some other questions, but I'm going to reserve those until the we can hear the applicant and, and, the, and the public, but the, um, yeah, I read the report, but is there anything, what's the primary reason why you're recommending this not be approved uh, rather than approval with these as conditions? I mean, the, the primary reason was 
we felt that the application was missing some elements and it was, wasn't quite detailed enough to, for us to be comfortable with um, this use here um, adjacent to that uh, existing single family neighborhood unless there, there's a little bit more detail. Understood. Madam Chair, I'll, I'll uh, thank you. I'm going to defer until I hear the, the yeah, more Yeah, I think that's important. In, in line with what Commissioner Michelle stated, I've gone through the packet several times with the expectation that eventually I was going to find a drawing or a layout of what the apartments would look like. Did you happen to leave that on the cutting floor? <laughs> Um, um, no, what we, what we, what, what they've provided, what we provide is what they provide us. So what we have is what we get. So the application is what the applicant tended. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, Brian, did you, you did say this property used to be zoned R12. Did you say that? No, not this property. That was referring to the neighborhood to the south. To the south. We went through a major rezoning of the area around the square, different neighborhoods about 10 years ago. And there was a, we did all of that over to pass, pass Liberty to the west, um, yeah. sort of a, a down Pacific. What's that? Was R12? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it was R12. Yeah. Okay. And there was also some multifamily zoning scattered around as well that we eliminated in different places. In an effort to kind of stabilize the neighborhoods. Okay. Will the applicant come forward, please? And state your name and your address. You're sworn in, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Just check it. I'm Montague Nordine, 509 Northwest Fairway Drive um, in Blue Springs, Missouri. You're too tall for <laughs> yeah, the microphone, I need to speak in, in other words. Too. Being uh, too tall has never been a problem before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Monty, Montague Nordine, I go by Monty. Um, only my mother calls me Montague when I'm in trouble. Um, I'm from 509 Northwest Fairway Drive, Blue Springs, Missouri, currently. Um, and uh, I, I do have packets for you guys okay. uh, that do, um, Chairman, include uh, some rudimentary drawings of some of the proposed uh, layout for the apartments. Um, so they, they are in here, if I may bring these up. That's fine. Do you have a copy for the desk? I do. So uh, just really quick about me, um, again, I'm Monty Nordine, and my business partner, Matt Turnbow, uh, are of Summit Holdings Group, LLC. Um, I, uh, my aunt was a part owner of Clinton's uh, growing up. My, my grandmother owned Learning Latch String, uh, which then became a bigger part of the German restaurant, uh, which now I believe is a different restaurant altogether. So uh, I spent a lot of time uh, growing up on the square. I went to school fifth through twelfth grade uh, at CPRS, uh, where my mother taught, um, and, and I graduated from there. Um, so uh, I also lived at that time, going through high school uh, off of uh, White Oak Street. So this was my neighborhood growing up. So uh, have a lot of vested interest in the area, and uh, would like to continue to uh, be uh, invested in in the square. Uh, as Matt and I said, uh, first of all, we'd like to thank you for your time, consideration of the manor. Uh, Summit Holdings is currently under contract to purchase this property at 420 South Main. 
Uh, it is an 8,000 square foot office building, as Brian uh, stated. It is divided into 12 office units currently. Um, and we would like to have it rezoned to multifamily and transform this building into 12 apartments. There would be, two, there would be four two-bedroom units and eight one-bedroom units. Each unit will feature uh, quality and design elements similar to the photos that we provided in the packets. Uh, these are actual pictures of pro properties that we've uh, renovated uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, this apartment building will also get a new fence on the south, west, and north sides to give privacy and separation or the buffer from the neighbors. The parking lot will be refinished and a dumpster enclosure will be erected on the northwest corner of the parking lot. The new landscaping will be added to meet city code and completion of the renovation. The purchase and renovation of this property will be around $650,000 and take eight to 12 months to complete. When we complete the units, we'll be renting, as they stated, 900 to 1100 a month for the two bedrooms. The building will increase uh, population density in the south main areas. It will increase walking, walking traffic to the square and uh, is, line, is in line with the 2040 comprehensive plan, which zone states the residential urban neighborhood. This project will take a, a vacant derelict building. We hope to repurpose it into a nice place people would love to call home. Uh, we always uh, say our rule of thumb is, you know, we would want to live there. That's kind of what we build to, is uh, just make sure to be property that we ourselves would be proud to live in. Our project has caught the attention and garnered support from the South Main Community Group, which we met with on December 7th. Jody Krantz, the Vice President of Independence Economic Development, is on board, as well as Councilman John Perkins, and Cindy and Jeff Rogers, the co-directors of the Independence Square Association, also has their support. This project will be an asset to the community, and we look forward to being long-term owners of the 420 South Main. Thank you. Oops, thank you. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions of the applicant? I do. Can you give me an estimate of the square footage for the one bedroom and also for a two bedroom? Uh, yes, I can. I believe we said the one bedroom unit, uh, we took the measurements, and let me just think back here. I've slept since then, so I believe the one bedroom units are around 700 square feet per unit. Um, and the only difference is that's not the exact plan that I've included in the packet. It's, it's very similar. We would have a wall that would be taken out. We're trying to do that open concept that everybody has so there wouldn't be a wall between the living room and the kitchen. The kitchen would have a nice island, even in the one bedroom units, that leaves it open so that the person that were, was involving in, in the kitchen would also be able to look out and participate in what's going on in the living room. So uh, it's a really good flow. You open up into the living room, uh, then there's that kitchen area, there's a, then you go into the one single bedroom, and the bathroom is in the single bedroom area. Those are the one bedroom units. The two bedroom units would include, you know, it's a little bit different plan for those. We don't have a rendering of those, um, but it, it is a, it's a little bit bigger. Those units are, are quite a bit bigger, uh, it, you know, at least, at least what? at least 850 square feet for the two bedroom units. How many square feet is the total building? 8,000. Up and down, together, combined. So it's a, yeah, right. It, it, and we wouldn't have to change, the beauty of this building is we wouldn't have to change, it's already broken up into 12 office spaces. And so we wouldn't have to change that. They all, and the doors all open into a, a main corridor on the lower floor and on the upper floor. So they, the, we can, keep security by just keeping those exterior doors, the key card entries, magnetic doors, uh, but they enter into the hall. So nobody that doesn't, isn't supposed to be there wouldn't have access to their front doors. Um, there are two ways of, of uh, exiting already. Um, you can go out, there's a main staircase in the main hallway, the common space that goes to the second floor. There's also a external uh, staircase that goes up to the second floor on the outside. Again, they would get the same, there are doors there right now, we just replace those with the magnetic security doors. Um, and so the nice thing is, is it's kind of the footprint and the, the spaces are already there for the units uh, that were utilized as a um, office space. It, it hasn't been utilized as an office space for quite some time. It's a really good, it's a really popular mattress dumping site in the back right now. <laughs> But um, yeah, we wouldn't have to change a lot of the, of the actual floor plan. We would just utilize it for um, 
units as opposed to offices. So my concern, and I don't want to do all the talking, but no. my concern is the exterior and keeping the quality of that neighborhood sound. I mean, it's I drive by it daily. I can't tell you how many times I drive by it. Sure. But it, it is a sore thumb, obviously. So I was excited sure. to hear about this. Good. But honestly, right yet, I don't have, I don't feel like I have enough to know if it fits that neighborhood. I can't like see from your drawings because basically what I see is Photoshop white, shot, white painting it and that's it. So I don't, it just, I can't get it to fit in my head with the characteristic of the neighborhood. What can you do? So yeah, a couple of things. I mean, just to give it a really classic look, I know that you know the work that's been done, like um, up and down the Truman Corridor, and like I said, right across on Waldo Street. You know, those really beautiful housing thing for the area. Um, it was built in the '70s, as opposed to um, you know a colonial or something that's built you know uh, longer ago than that. Um, and so to you know definitely give it some curb appeal, uh, aside from just a better parking lot, you know, which we do plan on resurfacing and, and planting the, um, you know, planting some trees and, and, and uh, landscaping. Uh, we do want to, uh, you know, like I said, change the exterior. Uh, the, one of the plans is to, all, all the windows and things like that have to be, will have to be you know, replaced. Um, we could change it to a black that are look really sharp on, on the white brick. Uh, especially as opposed to the white ones that are there, uh, the black Spanish railing uh, that's there, we, we um, you know plan on on painting um, uh, black as well to pop, so that you have that good contrast to the white. If you if you're curious what the it, the white brick actually looks like as opposed to the rendering, uh, we did do it. On, this used to be a red brick building, and it is you know now obviously it's really white, and uh, it just it does make a lot of difference when you change the the uh, hardware you know that, that's there right now that's perhaps white and rusty or just boarded up <laughs> to uh, something that's black and finished and new um, especially you know um, it, it's a double benefit because not only does it look great uh, from the street to renovate it at such a high level that we're planning on kind of just tearing down to the shell and and changing everything um, is that it, it's also very energy efficient then, so the tenants get to enjoy the energy savings of the new windows and the new insulation and things like that that are brought up to code. Um, so, you know, as far as any additional plans we're open to, we haven't brought in an architect yet because we're not at that stage, but we do plan on bringing in an architect, um, you know, to uh, help with not only like an exterior facade, but also in, in you know, getting the, uh, the units uh, kind of to have all the checklists that we're talking about. And we further talked, and, and just because we want to be able to attract the renters, the quality of, of renter to this, and we do want to be able to, one way to do that is we want it to be a price point that is warrant of the square. Um, you know, it is in such close walking proximity and stuff, that'd be a great benefit uh, for anybody that wants to live there. We do, we, as opposed to having laundry on site, we probably will have the laundry in the units directly, just so that would add value uh, to the units, longevity of a tenant staying, and they also have the privacy of just being able to do the laundry in their home, as opposed to you know up and down a common stair or something like that. So um, anyway, that's just something that we've recently talked about, but that's kind of what we've decided going forward. And it's not in here, but I did want to share it, you know, as the end, it's just something to be a benefit to uh, a tenant wanting to stay there long term. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like to me you guys haven't given enough drawings or thought to the city for us to prove this. I mean, you said it's 8,000 square feet. You said each apartment somewhere between 700 and 800 square feet. You're going to put 12 of them in there. The numbers don't add up. So I can tell you that right now, uh, especially if you're going to put two bedrooms and stuff like that. My next question is going to be electrical. You're going to go in and put washers and dryers and now you're going to put hot water tanks you're going to put air conditions and all that is the service enough for all that parking is going to be my next question they said parking is only enough for six units you're wanting to put 12 so that's why i'm at what wrong that, that was an error in the, oh that's in, an error okay. it is 12. 
Okay. Okay. So I just want to make sure there's enough parking for two cars per play. So, I mean, that's some problems there. I, me, myself, I'd like to see a little better drawing of what it looks like because I have no idea what the inside of that looks like. The way you look at it right now, the picture, it looks like to me there's four apartments there, eight in front. So four in front, four in back. But you say there's other ones in the center, but we cannot see that because we haven't seen no pictures or anything like that. Sure. I mean, I, that's why I'm saying you're, yes, it's not all here. You're lacking on information for us to make a good decision. Okay, understood. I mean, just talking about it doesn't do us very good. We got to have, and plus the city would like to have drawings too. I mean, maybe that's why people give us architectural drawings and things like that. Understood, and I see your point of view. Um, our point of view, uh, I guess the only reason, it wasn't requested until now, so I'm not opposed to that. I'll put it that way. Uh, the other thing, so absolutely happy to see it, and, and I do understand wanting to have that make it easier. Uh, our, we don't own the property yet. We're under contract. Okay. And so it would be one thing if I owned the property and had the plans better fleshed out, you know, because it, it is pretty expensive to get the architectural drawings for something of this size. Correct. And, and so before spending, you know, um, not only the time, but the, the money uh, for that, uh, we, you know, they're wanting to, we're wanting to close on the property, but we can't do that if we're... Well, you still should have had some kind of drawings and idea of what this going because you already said the, your price point, what it is and how much it's going to cost you. That should include some drawings for somewhat what you're thinking about if you thought there's all through. I mean, your company, I think, looks like you have thought things through, but we, you should have brought at least some. I mean, like the drawings, this drawing here you gave me, you say it's 700 square feet. I don't see where it's the air conditions. I mean, I don't see where those units are inside here. I mean, so no, I understand, and the reason is we're not doing a traditional, a, uh, that's a really good point, sir, and I should have included that, I apologize. We're not doing a traditional uh, air conditionings. Um, we're doing the ductless mini split systems, okay. and so because of that, you don't really have to have duct work. Right, and no, then, you don't have to have when you do that, yeah. But I'm just saying, there, there's nothing like that or anything telling us that. I mean, I'm sure that's what the city's looking for, that's why they're saying mm -hmm. not to do it. You just haven't given them enough information. Sure. No, I mean, well, right, and, and that's why we're here. Um, definitely, the uh, you asked about the power consumption. There are already, there were 12 meters there currently okay. for the office spaces, so there is the power uh, available there. I, uh, and so just, you know, reactivation of those meters to be right. put back um, for those units could be. But I'm saying if they're office, they're probably worth 60 amp or maybe a, uh, 80 amp services where you're probably, if you're going to go to an apartment, they probably got to have at least 120 amp service, so I don't know if that's good enough. And then I'm going to be asking the city about, you guys want to put apartments, I mean, are they going to be bringing up the fire code walls and things like that? I don't know if those offices are built that way, especially to codes now. So that's something you, I don't mm -hmm. guess you guys were talking I, about. I know that there has been, uh, even up and down Maine, like six on Maine is a new uh, six unit multifamily that was renovated within the last year. Uh, it, kind of the same era of building uh, right. too. So, I mean, I, I understand, I know that the city's probably been familiar with, with the, you know, the codes and stuff, especially for that area and what, what the buildings of, of, of this age. So we, we were kind of going off of that, seeing the construction that's been done. But right, I understand. But see, that's where if you had drawings telling us what the walls would be, they'd know be up to fire code if that's something they probably have not know or what you guys plan on doing and see that's what they need in the drawings that's why they're not recommended that's why I'm saying we need things like that so they can go ahead and recommend it understood okay. madam chair I have a question yes uh, of city staff have you given the applicant the necessary information for exactly what drawings or information that they need to provide because I don't think a full set of architectural drawings that's something that would be administratively approved uh, from a design standpoint, as well as, the, you know, it's a permit review set that the codes department would look at, I would imagine. I mean, I mean we don't have to have the, the, the complete specificity, but uh, this is a PUD, and mm -hmm. because of that, there, there is an expectation of, of more of a plan accompanying the rezoning. Okay, but you've given them that information specifically what they would need to provide in a resubmittal? Um, I, I can go over that with them. Okay. Uh, and then the other question I have is for you, sir. Um, have you spoken with the, the immediate neighbors? Yes, we have several of them here tonight. And we met uh, with, like I said, Jody, uh, had, met a meeting with the North and South Main um, communities, uh, the neighborhood. And uh, we sat down and, and, and fielded questions 
uh, from the community and, and the members of the square um, to, which is why, like I said, we have their support. Okay, thank you. I'll wait for the public comment. Okay. Uh, and actually, it's a really good point, sir. Um, like I said, we didn't know we needed drawings until tonight. It, it wasn't it wasn't asked of us several times we checked back you know uh do we have everything then that you guys need and we were told yes so i apologize if it seems you know we didn't have those but that expectation wasn't we didn't have that until tonight <laughs> okay yes let me revisit what uh, commissioner nesbitt started with and left it alone um let me persist yes sir in a thousand 8,000 square foot building with eight unit, 12 units, the average would be 667 square feet. If the smallest unit is some 700 square feet and the largest would be some 900, these numbers make absolutely no sense. So even if you had drawings, yeah. which would probably have, would have prevented you from making the statement that you made, this doesn't fly at all. This is incomplete. You've given us information that, that just really flies in the face of logic. I mean, you're presenting 12 units in 8,000 square feet, and you're going to tell me the smallest is going to be 700 plus, and the largest is 900, when the average of 12 is 667. I misspoke. I'm, I was standing up here trying to do the math in my head, and uh, it was incorrect. You don't do math in your head before a commission. You've sworn to tell the truth. And therefore, you should be prepared to tell the truth. I'm sorry I got the measurement wrong. Um, we can get the correct you know, measurements. But it, it sounds like then it would have been the 600 uh, square feet for the, the one bedroom unit. Sir, I would like to. I ask that question because I am your potential renter. I'm the person who loves the square. I'm a citizen who wants to be near the action. I love my historical districts. And if I were your partner, I would tell you to enthusiastically sell me on the idea that you're bringing something that citizens would want to live in. And you painted a picture that got my hopes up, but not enough information for me to want to consider it. So I don't know what the rules are here, Madam Chair, but I would almost recommend you withdraw, do a lot more work, and come back. You, uh, Commissioner L. Wiley, I almost finished. <laughs> the repurposing of a building, especially this building, should be a joyful and, and highly receptive process. I have to confess, I'm disappointed. I really came with the thinking that there was more. And there's just, I can't possibly begin to consider this. I can't. That would be a total abdication. And, I, I, and we're excited about this building. Hear me. But we're not excited about this packet. Understood. And I, I apologize for the disappointment. I definitely, accept your apology. Definitely not our, uh, our aim. Um, Go ahead. Taking Commissioner Preston's uh, comments, uh, uh, I agree with you. Um, I would like to hear the public still, because uh, I would mm -hmm. like that perspective to be given for the overall consideration and for, for, for the record and for the applicant to hear. Yeah, I think, I think that is. So do I. Yeah. That's the right thing to do. OK, so thank you, and we'll let you be seated. And then let's hear from the public so that we can make a very well-educated decision for this project. All right, is there anyone here who would like to speak for this case? Come on up and speak your full name and your address, please. You can, you can lower it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Too short. <laughs> 
My name is Robin Munn of 500 South Main Street. My husband and I are the next door residential neighbors to the property of 420 South Main. You were right there. <laughs> we are in favor of the rezoning of this commercial property to a multifamily dwelling as has been described. This would include the six foot privacy fencing that would be placed between our properties. We would appreciate that because we are a single family dwelling. Um, I'd also like to say I understand your concerns. I live next door to this building. I knew Mark Ransom, wonderful neighbor, but you know, it's a lot to take care of and his mom owned it for a long time so he couldn't do much and anyway. Uh, the point is is that I constantly have to oversee this property. And when the mattresses started showing up, I was anticipating, like I've had to deal with over by Stone Church, a homeless community or drug addict community. Um, the reason our rezoning occurred, because my husband and I bought our property and immediately Marcy Gregg got that taken care of, in our neighborhood of South Main, we were known to our, I have a Civil War house, so my house was built in 1861. And our houses were turned into these multi-drug addict homes. And they just stuffed people in them, and it was drug city in our section of the square. So we were thrilled when it went back to single family. <laughs> When I showed up at the meeting last week, I gave them a hard time because <laughs> I just, you know, I was like, no. But once I began to listen and get the feel, and I know the renovations that, the wonderful renovations that the McLeans have done in our street on South Main. I mean, our street has really, it, it's historic. I mean, I probably have one of the oldest houses, and yet it's like we have just this hodgepodge up and down our little section. And even though this means that goes back to a multifamily situation, I'm following my gut and I'm going to believe in these two men that they really are going to put in quality families of all different ages in these units. Uh, a little scared about when you're talking about the numbers not adding up right, but but I'm gonna trust that they're gonna go back and do some work and come back to you. And my, I'm still gonna be for this. My husband and I are for it. What is our alternative? Seriously, what's the alternative? Oh, sorry. What's the alternative for this building? Thank you. I didn't have my mic on, so nobody heard that on City 7. We love passion. Um, anyone else here for, to speak for this case? Again, state your name and your address, please. Sure. It's Colleen Huff, 717 South Willis Avenue. And, um, I mean, I'm fairly close. I'm in walking distance to this property, and I go by it all the time, too. And it's a real eyesore. And I speak to a lot of potential people that would be interested in um, starting businesses in independence or moving to independence. And it seems to me like the planning committee holds up a lot of progress in independence. And I did the math. I thought I heard him say eight one bedroom units at like 600 square feet and then four at 750 which adds up to 7,800 square feet. So that's what my calculator says. So in my opinion, I think we need to be doing everything we can do to support people that will invest in our city. And I think all the THC signs need to be taken off Nolan Road. They're in the right of ways. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Go ahead, come on up, please. And state your name and your address. My name is Muriel Ludeman. I live at 620 South Main Street. 
And my husband and I um, bought our, uh, a restored house, um, 1895 at 620. And uh, we've loved living on the square uh, area. And um, what I loved so much about the area is the hometown feel that it had. And we did do the stabilization, the rezoning in 2009, which we felt really uh, did a, a service for our area. And um, we have, but one thing I feel bad about is that we don't have any curbs. We have no curbs. Main Street of Independence, Missouri has no curbs. Note to city, agreed. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, but also, we have Ralph, Go Ralph Goldsmith's Pioneer Wagon that goes down our street taking visitors from all over the country, all over the world come here and to, to take in our history. And we have a building with graffiti on the front that looks like it's just being, a, a, it's been used as for storage ever since, well, well, yeah, ever since we've lived there, 19 years. It's just been a, a storage building, and it's gotten worse and worse and worse. So I am in favor of this. Um, I do think that due diligence needs to be done. We need to come up with, or, or uh, Summit Holdings needs to come up with a complete, finished, viable plan, which I'm sure they will. My children went, went to school with uh, Monty Nordeen, and, and they were taught by his mother. And so I know the family. I've seen, I've been by a property that he's rehabbed. I do know that this man is, and so is Matt Turnbow, are invested in this community. They're not an outside company. They are local, local people, and uh, and they love their they love their hometown. And so I got really excited when they they asked to meet with us so that they could present their plan, which sometimes doesn't not always happen. We already had had one Heartland came in and tried to do a 24/7 drug rehab center right across the street in the old. Independence Health Building, and we managed to shut that operation down because we knew it wasn't safe for our families. But this, this is something that I think is worth acknowledging and, and having them follow through with a good plan. And, I, I, and, and when we called, <clears throat> my, my husband and I are neighborhood watch captains for the, for the area, and so when they wanted to meet, they contacted us, and we arranged a meeting for them to come. <clears throat> there were, I think, uh, seven or eight of us there, uh, of the neighbors, <clears throat> and um, when we heard the plan, then we, except for, I think, one, there was, or there were questions about it. There was, there was doubts, but that was because of the zoning, the the R6 as opposed to R12 and C C2 and and all that, and uh, so um, that's kind of where I am with it. I I would love to see um, our neighborhood has so much and we so much to offer, and we I have seen since we've been there. Our house was was a burned out hull with trash trees in front of it at Ruby and Maine. And Tony Durant came in with the preservation com co uh, committee and he turned it into a jewel. And that's what I would like to see happen and I hope happens with this place. So thank you. Thank you, we appreciate your voice. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak for this case? Madam Chair, while they're coming up, I, I think it should be clear here this commission is excited about this project. However, there are protocols. And my prayer is that what is missing will be fixed. And that this project will proceed in due haste because it's needed. As you stated, my dear, the image of this city is at stake. It's not good for out-of-towners to go by there and see that. So we're excited about it. We really are. Go ahead, come on up. 
please state your name and your address, please. I am Barbara Taylor, and I live at 524 South Liberty. Were you sworn in? Yes. Okay, thank you. I just want to say that I'm one of the people that lives in one of those teeny tiny little apartments near the square, and I'm doing just fine in it. Regardless of how small it is, you can still be comfortable. But I'd like to say that I've watched these two gentlemen rehab a property in this area that went from total trash to just a beautiful, beautiful home that fits right in. It's almost Art Deco. Uh, it's on my little dog's walking path, so I passed it daily. I'd stop and talk to him for a few minutes to see what was going on with it. They did a super job, and you just couldn't ask for anything better. If, you, if there's anybody that can redo that building and make it suitable for the city, these people are it. So if anybody's going to do it, they can do it and make it right. Regardless of what they don't have today or what you require, I think you have the right people, and that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Go ahead. Come on up. State your name and address again. Uh, hello. My name's Maria uh, at 713 South Willis Avenue. Uh, I just want to make a comment. You know, uh, they're young, and as me, I'm a young girl and, you know, very passionate. And I just, you know, enjoyed how they look forward into turning a piece of history into, you know, keeping it alive for the square town and, you know, just doing something to keep it there alive just not to shut them down, you know, like, okay, you you don't have the correct numbers. Maybe they just, you know, kind of kind of got, got scared. I got scared myself speaking up here, but I just, you know, feel like we need opportunities like this, and we don't want to lose a beautiful piece for it to be burned down or anything like that. So doing something for the community will really help everybody out. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And you might have just come up with a new tagline, Square Town. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down. Um, yeah. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak to this case? Yes, come on up. For this case, sorry. Um, are you sworn in? I apologize, I was a little late. I'm not sworn okay. in. Can you please raise your right hand? Um, uh, do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Ransom, Jr. Uh, I live at 2300 South Old Mill Avenue in Independence, Missouri, 64057. And um, my, my siblings and I are the owners of this property. Uh, we inherited from my father when he passed away uh, last, last October. And um, so I just wanted to uh, speak on behalf of, uh, I was at the, the neighborhood meeting um, just to kind of get some insight into what they were planning. And um, I don't speak for my siblings, uh, but I, I, I speak for my wife and I as residents of Independence who also pass by this building frequently. And, and it is embarrassing. Um, it, it has been uh, the, through the time that my father owned it. It was um, upsetting uh, that he wasn't really able to take care of it and, and to get it after all the residents, uh, or all the, um, excuse me, the, the tenants, the, the businesses moved out over the years, uh, he wasn't able to, to get it updated and, and put the money into it that it needed. Um, and since his passing, my siblings and I have been um, working to get the, everything that was stored in it uh, thrown away and get it prepared for the market and um, so that someone could, could bring in the funds and the resources to, um, to do something spectacular with it. And we're very excited about uh, the information that is available about what the plan is. I recognize and validate that, that more information is desired by the commission and, and I appreciate their direction um, on this project and, and their um, consideration uh, as far as um, what else would happen. I really don't know. We're just really hoping that um, something that my family and I drive by every Sunday on the way to church um, will, will be a beautiful um, uh, fixture in the city and, and on Main Street, and where um, we feel encouraged by the previous projects that have been have been um, sort of presented uh, that this team has worked on, and we're we're grateful for their consideration to um, to be involved uh, long term um, on something that has been part of my family for many years. Um, and I apologize for the um, some of the uh, lapses in in getting those. Um, you know, the trash that sometimes gets, get, sometimes gets dumped, uh, getting it cleaned up in a timely manner. But we're grateful for our neighbors for letting us know when there are issues, and uh, we're, um, uh, we're doing the best we can. But uh, I, I'm looking forward to um, 
to seeing things move ahead, and I appreciate the commission's uh, enthusiasm for um, having this um, piece of uh, this this property uh, be beautiful again and and be um, something worthwhile in the city. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak for this case? Is there anyone here who would like to speak against this case? All right. Would the applicant come forward again? Because I'm sure we have questions. Follow up. <coughs> Look at me. <laughs> Anybody have questions of the applicant? Oh, did I make him stand up for no reason? No, absolutely. <laughs> I need, Thank the, you for coming. I need the exercise, man. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> Sir. What would you like to do? We. Wait a minute, Madam Chair, yes. can I make a comment to yeah. staff? Staff, if we make recommendations that he fix the appropriate uh, drawings and everything to you guys, if we approve this with that stipulation, could it move forward on to city council? Or does it have to have appropriate paperwork here? Okay. I think that's... I, don't, I just want to make sure. I, mean, I don't want to slow this project down. That's why. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I want to make sure that then. Then sound like to me the next thing. If he wants to continue on, he needs to postpone it for another meeting. Good like. question. I mean, that's yeah. why I want to make sure. I mean, we would like well, to be a the information before council. Yeah, it wouldn't be a postponement. It would be a rejection, and then a resubmittal. Is that correct? No. Yeah. No. I don't know why you would want to reject it and make them resubmit. It would be best to just continue, continue. the case continue. for the month okay. or six weeks, whatever, and give them an opportunity to correct the, it's their case. Okay. That was, why, that was why the question was, how would you like to proceed? Okay. Well, I just want to make sure he knew what his options were. Well, I, think, yeah, I think he's been... <laughs> it's been beaten into him. I, I, I appreciate the clarification because I, I, <laughs> I, I am young and I, I don't know what I don't know, but... Uh, yes, sir. I would appreciate the opportunity to get you the necessary documentation so there's a clearer picture uh, that it can be approved and be excited to back the uh, project. Um, like I said, I do apologize. I would have had that tonight had we known that that was a re requirement. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I. Um, it sounds like the enthusiasm is there, perhaps on both sides. We just would like to close on this property. I know the, the current owners would like to close, but I, I do know that we don't want to still end up with an empty Question office building, you. sir. Do you think you could get drawings and that which would be reasonable in presentation by the next meeting, which is January the 10th? Well, we would need it two weeks. Two weeks we days. would need it, yeah, two weeks before. Weeks before, probably if first, then, first Christmas, meeting in February, day after Christmas, and then so, and then we have another meeting, obviously two weeks after that, if you need a little bit more time. Twenty fourth of January. By the twenty fourth of January, so I needed two weeks before that, so I need to get it to you in to mid January. You could probably we could accommodate that. I think. I mean, I don't know that I'm speaking for all of us, but I think that we would like to get to a yes because we all recognize that um, South Main is very important. It's important to the history of independence and the quality of that neighborhood remain the same because I also remember when uh, South Main's inhabitants were, you know, a little scary. <laughs> and so it's on a good trend. And I think that for me, I'm always worried about the future. And one of the things I enjoy so much about this particular group of people is that we are trying really hard to look 30 years in the future and and make sure that we're not doing something that 30 years from now they're going to look back and say what in the world were they thinking and right. so I think that's probably something that's in the back of our mind mm -hmm. is making sure that we're making a right decision for Main Street not to let it trend go backwards in the trend but to take it forwards yep. and I think we would all feel better if we had, like they're saying, a little bit more information. Sure. I think some of the things we're looking for is what that exterior will look like. Mm -hmm. I feel like the neighborhood would feel better about that too, just so that they felt confident knowing. I'm not sure the innards matter as much to us as the exterior. I think that 
It's good in, in some realm, it matters because of who would inhabit it and be on Main Street. But honestly, I think it's mostly the exterior that's really our concern. Understood. And what a, I would like for the neighborhood to be able to visually see what a six foot fence looks like down the, on that street. I think that's important. And if that, if there's another, if, it, if you Photoshop it and you see that that fence or cat or whatever doesn't look appropriate, maybe come up with something that does. I think we're just looking for a way to make it look like that neighborhood. Correct. And, and I understand and, and just know that like we're not in opposition to any any of those improvements or, or what those would want to be. And so we would follow the guidelines of what, you know, would be desired. Madam Chair. Yeah. Do you have a vision in your mind keeping historical preservation, landscape, desired lookability as people drive by? Is that very clear in your mind? Because that's what was missing. I understand. And so taking her <laughs> recommendation, chair's recommendations, but also those are the kind of things that build the excitement that had we had that, we would have all been on the same page, but then also looking at the numbers. The numbers Correct. have to make sense yeah, yeah. And, and correcting that. And I think we'd all be excited about that building changing mm -hmm. that Main Street. Understood. Yeah. Commissioner yeah, hey. Nesbitt is going to ask you at the next meeting. Yes, sir. About the utilities. <laughs> yes, sir. This is a hint. And the parking. Hint. And the parking. Yes. <laughs> he we, won't go to the parking. We knew about, the, we knew about the parking. We he's going to ask you about how you migrated from a commercial office application to <clears throat> a residential use. Will the pipes support? Will the sewage work? Will the water work? Will the electrical work? All will be updated. Because he's going to ask you. I'm just, tell, I'm, good, I'm just telling you. I understand, sir. I hear you loud and clear. We'll, we'll get on that. <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes. If you give me some latitude. Um, I'm a resident of South Main. Um, and, you know, frequently walk to the square from my home. And as my lovely wife, who just happens to be here tonight, will attest, um, probably every walk will, will involve some... I wish somebody would have done to, would do something oh, to that building. Yeah. Probably, probably has heard that way too much. Sure. So um, I, I'm just going to everybody else has ex expressed their passion and excitement for a project here. I'm just going to take my opportunity to do so. Um, I'm excited that the the neighbors are behind this project as well because all too often a multifamily project comes in front of of this commission and. Um, the, the neighbors are in an uproar about it, and sure. you have the support of the neighborhood, um, which is very important to us. Um, I was also extremely excited to see the letter come in from city staff that Doug Cowan, one of one of our other neighbors, has had provided uh, supporting affordable housing. Um, the there is he he a bit you know better than almost anybody in town can tell you the transformational nature of, of affordable market housing can be for those families transitioning from other, you know, from, from worse, worse conditions. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about this project. I think it is a lot of opportunity for our neighborhood. Um, and I was very pointedly asked the city staff, what, what exactly was it that kept it from being, a, you know, a recommended approval? And it just is the, the, the level of detail sure. that, uh, that mm -hmm. all of us are looking for. So my mistake is the first submission. I know I'll, I'll mm -hmm. own up on that. I just I, I don't know what I don't know. It's a learning process for me. Understood. I appreciate your patience. <laughs> Understood. So uh, you know I know this commission will be excited to see the next the next round. I think it's it's a good project for the neighborhood. And thank you for taking that initiative. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair. Yes. I make a motion that we postpone case 22-100-22 to the uh, continue. Sorry, continue the case till. Uh, January 24th meeting. Give the applicant time to. Second. January 24th. Okay. Second. Thank you. That's my second second. Normally your voice will carry. Normally my voice carries. <laughs> Only in this room. We're ready for a roll call. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Michelle. Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt. Yes. 
Commissioner Preston. Yes. Commissioner H. Wiley. Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley. Yes. And Chairman McClain. Yes. Case number 22, whoops, sorry. Case number 22-100-22, rezoning slash PUD 420 South Main Street will be continued until January 24th. Thank you, and thank you for all the voices. I think, I mean, I, I feel better about this because it is Madam something Chair, I think we would have liked to move forward. We yes. came to this commission about the same day. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Not in all of the days that we've been here have we ever had a neighborhood endorse the character of a developer. Not one time. Well done. Not one time has it ever happened. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm just, I'm warmed. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next case is there's now, now my agenda. Case number 22-100-23, rezoning of 9607 East US 24 Highway. Staff, will you give us report, please? Um, prior to me giving the report, I, I, I am unsure as to whether the applicant's even here. Is the applicant here? For the 24 highway case. All right, so we want to continue it? But, uh, yes, the January 10th meeting. Okay. Do you need a motion to I continue? Do. <laughs> I do. This particular case yes, to January 10th. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, call for the vote, please. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Michelle? Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner yes. H. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley? Yes. And Chairman McLean? Yes. Case number 22-100-23 has been continued to the January 10th meeting. Okay. Um, next thing on our agenda is election of officers. We are going to move that to January since um, Commissioner Michelle is leaving us. It was too much disruption or depressed. So we're just going to wait until January. She stole my thunder. I'm the so, <laughs> so, Commissioner Michelle, I'm going to give you the floor and then I'm going to take it back. Is this a round table? Yes, this is a round table. Okay, so yes, I am. I, I tendered my resignation or retirement from the Planning Commission this last week. Um, let a, fo a few folks know, but I. Uh, it's not because I, I have had of any desire to stop serving, per se, uh, but I have uh, taken a position with another firm and I'll be relocating to Minneapolis. And that's too big of a commute. Too big of a commute. I'm going to be going back and forth for the next six to nine months while we get my stepson out of high school and off to college. Um, <laughs> the house will be sold and then we'll permanently, permanently relocate north. Um, you know, so uh, while I'm coming back and forth, I'm not gonna be here on Tuesday nights even though I'm still a resident of the city. So um, it's been a fantastic uh, experience these last two years, these two years, a little right. over two, a little over two little years. Over two. Um, nothing but respect for our group. I've heard, we've talked about this several times. I think we have a fantastic group of commissioners here that uh, really have the best interest of the city at heart. And uh, even though we talk a lot about parking with Butch, <laughs> I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's been a wonderful experience and I have nothing but respect and admiration for all of you. Well, we thank you for your viewpoint. I think having an architect on the, the desk has been just so helpful. Madam Chair. We're gonna miss it, go ahead. I think we should, well, we can't stop it, but. <laughs> I already tried. I, I confess. Uh, to the extent that I've asked some decent questions is because I have counseled with Michelle. His value to this commission has been invaluable. Uh, he will leave a gaping hole and I will pray that the city will have the wisdom to look to his, one of his peers to Pretty come great. to this commission because he added so much value. I, I personally, I delight in it because he's 
his character. He has character. Yeah. I'll miss him. We're going to miss you. So we have a plaque for you. Yes, so you Commissioner office? Michelle, on behalf of city staff, the Director of Community Development, Tom Scannell, myself, we thank you for your service on this uh, planning commission, bringing your thoughtful consideration and expertise and your time uh, to all the planning cases that have been brought before you. We wish you well in your future endeavors, and you will indeed be missed. And we do have a nice plaque nice. to provide you, and I'll just bring it up. You need to go with that. And take it, we need take, a picture. Take pictures. And I would say that uh, my wife and I are going to be going up to Ophelia's after this, if any of my colleagues would like to join for a There's already a seat warmed up for us. Beverage. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes. Um, so, anybody else for the round table that the greater good? I would like to just add, I'd like it in the record that a peer architect could never replace you, but for the seat, would love to see that. And also for the record, um, Santa did drop by, but I'd just like to truly wish you all um, a Christmas of joy and an exciting, safe, and fun new year. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good health is never to be taken for granted. <laughs> that is true. Never. Yes. Well, um, we do wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a safe Merry Christmas, and I think the citizens who always come to voice their opinion, we do value it. It's important for us to hear um, all the way around an issue. Um, so I really appreciate it when voices come. And I appreciate the calmness of this year. For the most part, we've had really <laughs> calm discussions-ish. But that's okay if they're not necessarily. But I really appreciate it. And I think that one thing, I think I've said it before, but I really enjoy the diversity of this commission. I like that we don't always agree on everything because that's how you get to good answers. And I really appreciate all of you. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Merry Christmas. This meeting is adjourned.